Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me tonight. We are going to be painting a California sunset with palm trees. Very soft and dreamy. I've got my husband Mark here with me today. Well, you remembered. I know. Hey there, everybody. <laughs> And uh, this should be a good beginner lesson. I'm going to show you step-by-step step how to do it all the way through. So let's get started. Okay, I've got my example painting here. I did this this afternoon. This should be a pretty quick one lesson. It was very easy. I don't know. I was in. A, I'm, I've been in a seascape kind of sunshine and summer type of mood lately, so all my paintings have been very in that vibe. Good for this time of year. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm going to be using. This is my uh, nine by twelve inch uh, um, mixed media paper um, notebook that I paint on. Do all my examples on. Um, so if you want to pick one of those up, you can look down in the links. All the just all the stuff that I'm going to be using today is down in the description um, in the links. So go ahead and pop that picture up there for them, hon. Oh, wow. That's a very small picture, I know. It is. Oh, you might have to make it larger. <laughs> Click on. Yeah, there you go. Nice. On the job training. <laughs> Thank you. That is live video for you right there. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our color palette is very, very sim simple this time. It's uh, white, titanium white, um, cad yellow light. But if you don't have the light version, you can use medium. Um, quinacridone magenta or any kind of uh, pink magenta type color. Um, and phthalo blue green shade. This is doxazine purple. Uh, but you could substitute black if you want your trees to be black. I made mine kind of a navy blue purplish color. So um, if you want them to be black, you could just do black instead. This is your painting. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> you could even change the background colors. If you wanted to do all warm colors, I think that would be pretty too. Um, I'm going to put out some bit of blending glazing liquid. This is acrylic glazing liquid satin by uh, Golden. It will extend our dry time a little bit. Give us a little bit of extra workability. Um, I'm going to pre-blend a few colors just because I found that when I was uh, working on this I wasn't getting the exact kind of colors that I wanted. So I'm going to blend in between both all of these colors and do kind of a middle value color for each one of them so that I can quickly grab it and while I'm working on my background. Now I've probably got too much of that quinacridone. You probably want like four parts yellow to one part quinacridone. So I'm probably going to have to put up. There we go. I just want a soft orange. That's a pretty color. And using a palette knife will help you keep the paint from kind of spreading all over your palette. So if you've got a little palette knife, I would probably use that if you know you're going to be needing to have the color mixed ahead of time. I don't often do it because I get too impatient, but I'm always glad when I do do it because <laughs> it does help keep my palette a little bit cleaner. A little bit less messy. Well, I think I'm going to do about equal parts of these two. Probably need more of the quinacridone actually. That phthalo blue's got a lot of, and this will actually make a, a purple close to the dioxazine purple. Okay. Take that off. If you've got a palette knife that's got uh, a lot of paint kicked up on it that's dried, you can uh, soak a little bit of alcohol on it and it'll come clean for you. So I'm going to just scoop this whole thing up here, put out some fresh yellow. I'm going to grab a little, probably too much, just a teeny tiny bit of that blue. I'm going to a little 
bit more because I want it to be kind of a teal color. I don't want it to be completely green. This will be the color at the top of the canvas. If you have a teal that you want to use instead, you could use that. So if you already have a teal that you like or, or maybe like phthalo turquoise or a color like that, that would work. I'm going to keep adding more of this blue until I get a turquoise, the color I like. That yellow really was tinting quite strongly, so it's done really well for this. How are you doing tonight, honey? Oh, I'm doing good. So far. So far, so good? Mm-hmm. Okay. Trying to stay out of trouble over here. Huh? Trying to stay out of trouble. Yeah, you you were posting pictures in my group earlier of your dinner, quote, <laughs> dinner. <laughs> Cheetos and wine, I think, <laughs> something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I am yeah. not responsible for what you decide to eat. So everybody was like, poor Mark. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> I worked all day, too. I'm so abused. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't start it. No, we, we usually do dinner after the show. We do. It's just too much time or too short of a time between when I get home from my Exactly. Nine to five job to get ready for this. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you, honey. Well, you're welcome. I mean, yeah, because you, you don't have a it. you don't have a hot meal, you know, waiting for me. No, and, you don't. And the kids in suits and ties waiting for me. You know, I, <laughs> I saw the shows from the, either. Yeah, I saw the shows from the forties and fifties. <laughs> you know, it's supposed to be done. Think, exactly. Okay, I'm gonna put my blue over here to keep it clean. Oh, that's probably way more than I need. Way, way more than I need. <clears throat> and I'll put some fresh yellow out too. Okay. All right, that was a little bit tedious, but that will be, we will be glad we did that later once we start our painting here because we want to go fast on this background um, and work in quick layers to keep it from drying on us. Because we want to work from one section to another to another while it's wet and work up uh, the canvas. So what I did is I started with, and I'm going to grab some of this whoop, glazing liquid too. Wow, got some hair. That was weird. Grab a little bit of water. So I'll be using a little bit extra water than I normally do. Um, and my white... I'm going to put down a layer of white with my that's mixed with my glazing liquid first. Just at the bottom here where I'm going to put my yellow. Because all these colors, I want them to be very pastel-y, kind of dreamlike, uh, soft and faded. So using the white underneath will help give that appearance. So now I'm going to grab a little bit of that yellow and mix that over the top of that white. I'm just working it back and forth. Once I get enough of that color down, I'm going to wipe it off my brush. Grab a little bit more of that white. Come up here. Blend it up. Don't go more than halfway up with that color. Then I'm going to grab a little bit more glazing liquid, a little bit more white and a little bit of the orange. And I'm gonna work some of that orange in that we mixed. Right over the top of the top edge of that yellow. And if I keep adding the glazing liquid and keep working at this while it's wet, I should be able to have a little bit of play time with it before it'll start to dry on me. So if you feel like it's starting to get sticky and it's not flowing for you, just stop, let it dry completely, and then you can keep going with this and keep adding layers on top. But you don't want to start mess keep messing with it when it's starting to dry. So I think that that's looking good. Grab a little bit more of my brighter yellow and do some right here. There we go. All right, wiping that off. Grabbing 
some of the quinacridone magenta. Mixing that with my white. So Having a little bit of glazing medium. The what brush is that? Half inch flat? Uh, this is my one inch flat. One inch flat. Mm -hmm. Man, I was so... So close. Almost. I was halfway there. Halfway there. Kind of like a half marathon. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So I went over the top a little bit of that orange there. I'm going to grab a little bit more of the orange with the glazing medium and come underneath it. Just pull it down just a little bit. Okay, that looks good. Wipe it brush. Now, the one thing I don't want to do is have like stripes where they're not blended to together. So I'm really trying to work on making sure that these are blending a little bit as I work to the next color. So I'm going to grab a little bit of the quinacridone magenta, a little bit of my white, and a little bit of the purple color that I mixed. And I still have a little bit of yellow on my brush. I really should have cleaned that up or gotten a new brush because it'll make it a little bit grayed, but I don't actually mind that because it's sort of got that hazy look anyways. I'm going to clean that out pretty well there. I'll grab more glazing liquid, a little bit more white Some up here. Grab a little bit of blue. Back and forth quickly. Don't want this to dry. If you're doing this on a bigger canvas, you're just gonna have to use a bigger brush. So you can still get this effect, you just have to use a bigger brush. And you may have to use to just do one section at a time and let it dry, and then mix a little bit of your uh, in between color. Put a little bit of it down before you put your next color on. Okay, that looks pretty good. Grab a little bit of the green now. That teal color is going to be right at the top. Back and forth, back and forth. Yep. Side to side. Thank you. Not up and down. <laughs> no. It's harder to do it up and down. <laughs> I'm just trying to help out with the technique there in case people weren't catching that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, I do need this to dry, and then I'm going to have to do you one more You need me to dry it? I need you to dry it, please. Oh, all right. Yeah, I'm running out of... This paint is running off. Just get that off the edge there. Yeah, it's oh, creeping up on my edge. Hold on. Let me see if I can get it off there you without. Need to get that off of there. I know. I'm trying to do it without making a mess here. There we go. Okay. All right. I can't work in conditions like this. Very, very lightly touched it. I barely touched the brush on the canvas <clears throat> to blend that out. If I. <clears throat> if I'd pressed down too hard, the paint um, was fresh enough that I might have pulled off all of the color. So I did not want to do that. I'm gonna clean that up, clean up my workspace a little bit. So if you're just joining us for the first time, welcome. We're really glad to have you. Um, we are all about helping teach folks how to paint in a fun and encouraging environment. And... Uh, We've got a lot of first-time painters that have started with us and have really uh, improved quickly um, over with lots of practice. And I tried to make these lessons uh, 
accessible and do different levels. So I have, this is probably one of my easier paintings. Usually Tuesday nights I do easier paintings so we can keep them short. But then, um, on, uh, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> on Saturdays we do longer versions, uh, more advanced lessons. So, um, but... So we hope you will subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah, good, okay. thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so you can see it dried a little bit darker than it went on. So I'm really liking this bright yellow down here. Okay, nice and bright. Now if I wanted to mute it, which um, this is a little bit more kind of a dreamy, pastelish um, look. What I'm going to do is grab a little bit of white in my glazing medium. And I'm going to go over it. And now I could use zinc white. If you have zinc white, this would probably work well because zinc white is a transparent white. So it'll give you a softer um, transparency than this titanium white will. But I'm just going to kind of lightly glaze over this just to kind of soften it all up especially in this pink area I want it to be a little bit softer pink I don't want it to be so fuchsia this will also kind of unify the painting a little bit and if you've got any areas where you need to add a little bit more color you can add them at this point so I think I want to add a little bit more pink I feel like it goes from yellow to bright pink. There's not like a lot of soft pink in between. So I want a little bit more soft pink. Right so when are we going to get a blow dryer cam? I don't know. I mean, that's one of the more important parts of the show. That's true. The people want to see that. I think. Exactly. See the sweet 1500 in action. <laughs> That's that's the Pro fifteen hundred. Pro fifteen hundred. Yeah, it's not okay. just it's not the amateur version. You gotta Got know it. what you're doing. Okay, back to your painting explanation. Pink, light pink. <laughs> that's better. Okay. A little bit more of that brighter pink there. Just a little bit softer. Now, if you like the other version, you could have left it. I, you know, you don't have to do this second layer. It's up to you. Your painting, your rules. I'm adding a little bit of that purple toward the top most of this to be that purple color. I just want the blue to be kind of peeking out at the top a little bit. So all right, that's looking a little bit better. A little more hazy, a little bit more soft and pastelish. Just didn't want it so bright. Yeah. One more layer of this blue up there while we've got it out. This kind of reminds me of our dating days. Yeah. And watching Miami Vice. That's true. It does look like a Miami Vice <laughs> painting. That is so true. That was our date nights when we were, yep. what, 15, 17? Yep. Yep. Friday nights, Mark's I think it was, wasn't it? Friday. Have to work at McDonald's. Yep. Come over with a pint of uh, haagen chocolate chocolate chip yep. ice cream. That's the way to woo, girl, I'm telling you. That's right. I knew <laughs> what I was doing. Skills. I had the sweet caterpillar mustache, too. You did. You did for years. Feathered hair, feather back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I think it was the 90s before you got rid of that feathered hair, too. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Took, well, once I home. once I had you hooked, then there was no need to keep it. Right, right. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let you dry that one more time. Oh, I've got a little bit softer blend all the way across now. Can oh, you dry that? Yeah, yeah, yeah please. Oh, man, hold on. I'm missing all kind of chat. Sorry. You're, you're ruining my you're chat keeping, time. You're keeping busy than I am keeping you busy. Mm -hmm. Time. Huh? So you can talk. I can talk. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll do. I'll do our <laughs> stick man, real quick while we're while we're waiting for this. Stick man is our mascot. Mark made him for us, and we add to him. We'll add a big old palm tree right here for him. I'll hopefully be able to show you how to create this yourself here in a minute. But. Depend on whatever we're painting. He didn't get a mushroom though. I probably, I, I ran out of time when we were doing our mushrooms. We were doing a back-to-back -back collaboration again, so I was kind of running out of time. I needed to get done. But anyhow, he's, we're almost out of room on our stick man guy. You probably do. Okay, thank you, honey. You're welcome. Very pretty. I like it. I don't know. Sometimes you just gotta, gotta paint the sunset. Make you happy. <laughs> now I didn't do any clouds with this. I want it to be kind of hazy. Um, I don't know. This is dry enough. But you want me to dry a little more? No, it's alright. I can. <laughs> you can turn the fan on. It's okay. I'll just go lightly with this. If you go too heavy on your chalk after it's while well, it's still drying, it'll lift it off. So it's not one to stick. Yeah. Yeah. Just give it another little maybe another minute, honey. Sorry. It, can you do cool air on it yeah, to cool it down good. too? That is okay. cool air. All right. Yeah. Just try one more time. Sorry. <clears throat> So I decided to do five palm trees. Um, if you wanted to do them in straight lines, you could do it that way. I decided to kind of curve one over on top of the other one. Um, I didn't really have any specific uh, reference photos. I had a couple that I was looking at that I got off Pixabay that were, you know, different kinds. This one's kind of more the Southern California palm tree with the uh, wide fan palms. And then this one's more of the tropical coconut kind of palm tree. These are like the date, date palms. Um, that I grew up around, but I kind of like the look of these ones, um, better just for our purposes. They're a little bit easier to paint. Um, so we're going to do that version. Um, and I had actually been asked to do fireworks. So I, I thought about it when we were, when I was doing these today, that this would actually kind of work almost the same for fireworks. It'd be pretty similar if you wanted to adapt it. You just wouldn't have the big tree trunks you might have a, a very very thin line going up but uh, that? yes good thank you okay better okay so I'm gonna do oh now it's drawing very good thank mm -hmm. you honey I'm gonna draw my two tree trunks that are kind of crossing over here this one's gonna be up high filling in this whole area and if you want to, if it helps you, you can draw a big old circle and then kind of find the center of your palm tree and kind of do your lines out from that. The ones in the middle will kind of go straight up and then the ones around the sides will kind of come down. And they sort of stay in that sort of circular motion. So um, probably can't see that very well. Let me see if I get a darker chalk for you. There we go. So I'm gonna so 
this one was like this. And now all these coming off of it. Do one big one right here that's going to take up this whole area here. So I'm going to kind of find the center of that. Curve my palm tree down. And they'll go straight up from the trunk and then they'll start curving around the sides and down. So you're kind of looking at it from above. So the ones that are kind of coming this way might curve in. You might just see a little tiny bit of it poking through, but we're not going to really concern ourselves with that too much. Do these ones pretty close together. Like that. And then this one's going to be just kind of up here by himself. that it's pretty light I wasn't trying not to press too hard because this is still pretty damp even though it's even though it's dry it's not cured yet it'll take about 24 hours for the paint to completely cure um, so you never want to press down too hard on paint that's still drying still curing all right I think I'm gonna use this actually this purple that we mixed I might just use this for my thing and leave off the uh, dioxazine purple all together because I really like this purpley color we have going on. I'm going to switch to my angle brush here. This is my 3 8 inch angle zen and look at I even started on the right side honey so I didn't put my hand in it. <laughs> you're learning. You're coming right along oh, with these I tutorials. Know. Good job. Thanks. Now, as I get down to the bottom I'm going to press a little bit harder so I'm going to start out pretty thin and then as I get down to the bottom, I'm going to press a little harder so I get a thicker line. brush very upright right over the line and I'm just kind of guiding it to where I want it to go it keeps it from if I if I held it too much at an angle I wouldn't have the control that I have that I if I'm holding it right upright and with my brush perpendicular to the canvas so if you're having trouble controlling your brushes you might try that especially when you're doing line work it's really important to keep your brush upright Okay, and then I'm going to use this again, and we're going to do our little fans off the main stem here. They're all going to come kind of grow from that same point. The palm trees, um, we had palm trees growing up in our yard, so, um, you know, we and we'd have to have somebody come and cut the extra growth off the bottom. Now I don't know with coconut trees they may not need that to be cut. They might just fall off on their own but um, the growth section sorry I need to get that smoothed out. The growth section is right here so that's where all the new shoots come out and then as they grow um, as they grow up and new shoots come upward these ones on the bottom die off and they start getting flatter and they hang down almost straight so that's why you kind of get this droopy look and that these ones up at the top are sticking straight up because these are the fresh new growth that are just starting to come out so if you kind of go uh, kind of use that as your guide then you can help you these ones are going to droop down because they're starting to die these ones are going to be nice and fresh and they're kind of going to almost stick straight out. I'm going to put lots of leaves in here and then we're just going to kind of crowd in a few 
this is our main stems of the of the leaves palm fronds I guess I should say and and we'll put the individual little so people can draw and paint in their palm trees in any style or shape they want to, right? Absolutely. Because they're the Drew Brees of their palm trees. <laughs> they're the what? Drew Brees of their palm trees. <laughs> You're welcome. I don't know who Drew Brees is. That would work better if I knew who that was. Uh-oh, man, you're going to get a lot of comments on Who's that. Drew Brees? Is that a football player? See? See, at least you're in the right area. Yep. Is it football? He's, yes, he okay. is. Okay. All right. <laughs> the Drew Brees of your palm trees. Okay. So, but in, in all seriousness, I guess I never really thought of this. A palm tree and a coconut tree are the same thing, or are they two different things? I think they're the same thing. I think that, I think they're in the same family, for sure. Okay. I mean, I think that they just produce different fruits. Different palm trees produce different fruits, is what I understand. You know, because the date trees, date palms, you know. I don't know. I guess Hashtag I should, palm tree facts. I guess I should look that up. Oh. Yeah, you want to stop painting and look that up real quick? No, it's all right. Okay. So I'm going to dip, I'm going to dab in some... Old growth or just kind of middle stuff here in the kind of bottom where those palm trees start or where the palm fronds start. And I've switched to a quarter inch angle brush. I did I did my example with the three eighths inch, but I think the quarter inch will be a little bit easier to control, maybe. And I'm just gonna start at the center of each one of these. stems or whatever these are, fronds, and I'm going to do my individual little leaves. And I'm going to overlap them quite a bit so that, can you zoom in, hun? if I go from inside out that I get thinner lines with these brushes. You could also use a, a liner brush and I might just switch to that and see how it looks. But I'm going to go from the middle line, so all these lines that I've done before, just going to go and paint on either side of them. Some of them I'm not going to do both sides. Some of them as especially the ones that kind of come down around the sides here that uh, you're not actually going to see the opposite ends. So some of them I'm only going to do one side with these leaves. Okay, somebody wants to know what brand and what kind of brush are you using These right are the now? Zen Royal Lang Nickel. They're one of the brushes that's in my brush list on brushguys.com. Um, down in the description, um, there's a whole list. I've been using the Princeton ones as well. Um, I'm looking for my liner brush. Okay, so I'm going to try the liner here. Okay, and a coconut tree is a member of the palm family. Thank you. So you were right. Good. Whew. I was worried. I was going to get the palm tree people mad at me. Apparently mushrooms had some controversy too. Somebody was saying that they're not for serious artists. So I, that's news to me. <laughs> <laughs> Did not know that. I'm I'm very serious over here. I, I, I take my blow I'm drying. Too. I think kids are serious artists. So I mean, mm -hmm. I've got a lot of serious artists that I follow that do whimsical art. So I don't yeah, like, think, I don't discriminate against any kind of art forms. I so, think somebody once painted a can of soup. <laughs> exactly. I mean, really? How serious is that? Yeah. Well, people get upset about the funniest things sometimes. I don't know. I don't get it. I just try to create art that makes me happy. I hope you do the same thing. Don't let anybody tell you what you can and can't paint. Yeah, we were we were talking about this the other night that, you know, people usually pick up take up painting to help relieve stress in their lives. Mm -hmm. 
and then they find that sometimes, you know, when they're painting, they get very stressed out. All right. Yeah. About it. You know, it's yeah, because the, they're worried about the results, or you know, when you're starting a new thing, it's hard. It's hard. You know. Go ahead. Finish. Oh no, no. no. It's just the advice that you gave in the other video about you know teaching kids and how kids are just carefree and they just get lost in the experience of painting. Right. And not so much the end. The end result, yeah. We get caught up with the results as adults. We want it to look a certain way, and especially when we're learning to paint, you know, you got to give yourself a break because it's going to feel weird at first, and it's going to take a little bit of time for you to get comfortable and, and for you to get to the point where you're be, you're able to see something and create, you know, uh, paint it the way you want it to look. Um, you know, I and I remember vividly that that feeling of, you know, wanting to paint something and not being able to get it to look the way I wanted it to look and getting very frustrated. So um, I think that if we just kind of give ourselves permission to try and to, you know, anything worth doing is worth doing badly at first. That's what, <laughs> that's one of my favorite sayings uh, from my, one of my friends that was an art teacher. She had that up in her room, you know, and it's true, you know, it, nobody started, every one of us that's been painting for years and years, we all started out as beginners. We all started out by picking up our brush for the first time, and I can guarantee you 99.9% .9 of us did not paint that well, um, or, you know, had frustrating times when we painted. Uh, but the longer you do it, the more you practice, the more you have help with your practicing, and I'm, I'm saying, you know, have uh, guided things doing these tutorials is one of the best things that you can do to help you quickly grow as an artist you know and then you'll get to the point where you can do this stuff yourself um, that's the goal you know is to eventually get to the point where you can kind of do whatever you want to do you don't have to do the same stuff I'm doing you can do you know or take it and make it a little bit different uh, I love it when I see people in the groups you know that have taken one of my tutorials and done something a little bit special with it made it um have i even been on camera honey have you been paying attention uh, well, i need somebody to be watching that okay it looks like it so far well i know uh -oh. it because i just moved no it. no no i'm watching the delay okay, i can good, see that good, you're good. mostly on camera okay. mostly on camera <laughs> you are i'll zoom out just a Thanks. little bit make my job easier I don't even know what I was saying, but oh well. It was, it was, I was making a good point there. <laughs> you had to stop and chastise me. Sorry. Yeah, I wasn't chastising. <laughs> no, I, was, I know. I was frustrated that I keep going off camera. Mm. No, it, it doesn't look like you went off camera. Okay, good. Good. All right. I mean, kind of fun. It might be a little bit dark right there, so I'm going to tap that off a little bit. And I'm really kind of overlapping and trying to keep these branches random so that they're um, they're not too patterned, um, kind of just flicking from the outside, kind of getting right over the the line there and just flicking along that line so that they overlap. And if I get if I get off off the line there a little bit, um, that's okay. Just kind of throw in a couple over the top and it'll look like you meant to do that. Um, this can all be kind of camouflaged, and it's really supposed to be kind of overlapped, and and there should be there should be some that are kind of going in weird directions, so that it looks like some of these are sort of facing us. Just leave a little bit of breathing room between some of the branches, just to give it that that overall um, correct outline. That's the main thing you want it to. Is that for your eyes to breathe? No. No. Just for the okay. trees, the branches to breathe. I got a little space. <laughs> you can't tease me today. I'm not feeling that good. <laughs> My back hurts. That's the best time to tease you. I know, because I'm <laughs> defenseless. <laughs> mm. You're just upset I didn't give you any of my Cheetos. I am kind of upset mm -hmm. about that, actually. Yeah. You didn't even offer. Nope. 
I needed all 160 calories in this package. <laughs> okay. Well, I had peanut butter crackers, so I didn't share mine with you. do a couple that are sort of over the top so maybe uh, like curved in and around you won't be able to see them very well but at least we'll know they're there and they'll kind of fill in some of that middle area so that it doesn't look like the tree branches are all going in the same direction these are actually kind of then somebody's asked are you layering the same color on all yes. the leaves yes these are the same right now i'm going to add other colors later but uh, for now i'm just doing this this blue purple color that we mixed with the quinacridone and thala blue and then the other uh example one that i did i used doxazine purple and thala blue it gave it a little bit darker a little bit different hue but i really like this color since uh, all these colors are in our painting anyways. This is actually, uh, I don't really know why I used the purple to begin with. Just had it out. So. Here, sorry, I'm getting quiet here. <laughs> Thinking. Just trying to go quickly here. Fill in all these. Oh, we're already 45 minutes. Wow. I wasn't sure. I didn't really time myself this afternoon when I was painting it, so I wasn't sure exactly how how long this one would take, but I figured it would be in under an hour, so I think we're probably right on track for that. And if you'd like to uh, try this and share it with me on my social media, I've got all the links to that are down in the description. I'll also have a traceable available on Patreon if you want to help support our channel. They're just a dollar a month for our traceables. Um, and I take a drawing uh, from whatever. So after the show tonight, I'll let this dry and I will take a drawing of it. And that's what I post on Patreon for our folks. So it's the exact representation of what we painted during the show is what we put on our traceables for good or bad <laughs> it is what it is and, yeah, and thanks to everybody joining us tonight if you're enjoying the video give yes. it a thumbs up you can also subscribe to Angela's channel and click the bell to get alerts to uh, join us in all the lives We'd love to have you in chat you can ask questions like many people are and uh, if the mods can't answer them in the chat, then I'll try to get them on air for Angela to answer. Or I'll make something up. <laughs> we do have fun in our chats. I do. That's one thing I don't, that I miss about uh, painting live is that I don't get to chat with y'all. But I do do, um, do do, um, chats on Mondays in my, um, I have two Facebook groups that I chat in on Mondays. Um, one is my Thankful Art group. That's the one that's for uh, public. And then I have one for my Patreon folks, Patreon um, supporters. And we do challenges and I do t extra tutorials and things for them on Mondays in that group. So little mini tutorials this week. We, what did we do? Oh, we, we experimented and I did a, outside it's out did some water we're working on water so we did a waterfall and we did uh, we did a little water uh, with alcohol ink and margarita salt it was kind of a um, margarita day <laughs> yesterday <laughs> and so 
But if you want to uh, find out about those, the link's down in the description. You can join us for those. It's kind of fun. And on Mondays in Thankful Art, I usually just talk about what I'm going to be painting, and I answer questions, and that way I can... The, the whole reason I was talking about that is because I do get to chat on Mondays with, the, with everybody, so that's been fun. And I'm actually on camera, so I have to actually do my hair that day, which is mm -hmm. <laughs> good. It's good. I don't like to be on camera much, but I'm getting better about it. Okay, so as you can see, when they get crowded like this, I'm just kind of still still going to do it and I may go a little farther with some of these just to kind of give, give the outline a little bit more of a boost so that it's not such a perfect circle part. So now I'm just going to add some other colors just to kind of give it a little bit of a glow like maybe the light is hitting the, the leaves and shining through them a little bit in some places. So I'm going to use my pink and yellow colors to do that and add them. end up not having enough white, but I sure got enough white today. <laughs> mix in a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow together. And when you're using your liner brush too, I didn't mention this before, I should have you always want to add quite a bit extra water. You can see how thin my paint is. If you tried to do this with heavy body acrylics without thinning them down, it would be way too, way too um, thick and you wouldn't get a um, smooth line. So when you're working with heavy body acrylics, you can, you can still do these effects with your liner brush, but you definitely need to water down that paint uh, to get a nice line on it. Okay, there we go. So I've got a little bit of the yellow and a little bit of white mixed in, and I'm just going to twist my brush to a point and make sure that I get off any extra water off of there. And then I'm just going to kind of go in, and I figured my light might be coming from the bottom, um, so I'm just going to add a little bit of light color to just a few of these and even go over the top of on a few. Now this is a totally extra step. You don't have to do this part. If it's stressing you out, don't do it. Um, Mark said, you know, do the parts that make you happy. Leave the rest out. So I'm going to add a little bit of quinacridone magenta to my palette here. little bit of white get some pink and do some pink as well This color is kind of the color that's behind these trees, so I might grab some of that orange too and use a little bit of that orange. I'm only going to do it on a few of these. You 
see the orange down here. Lightly, my, my blue should be clean or should be dry now. I'm just going to lightly wipe off any chalk marks that I'm seeing so that I can have a clean canvas to work with. Just make sure your paint's dry underneath. So we got a question mm -hmm. asking about a uh, light source. Yeah. Is it just like a sunset directly behind or what's Yeah, that? I think it's it's probably coming from underneath here. Uh, so we're just going to put it kind of toward the bottom and some of these that are on the back side of the tree would not be getting any light, so uh, this area I'm going to keep pretty dark because of that, but I'm just going to put a little bit on the areas that might have, might be catching the light. If you get too much, just kind of use your finger and rub it a little bit. We're just kind of trying to give it a soft glow. It's very transparent. This water, this paint is pretty watered down, so... I'm not putting solid lines on here. I'm just kind of trying to tint the area in and around these leaves so that they look a little bit fuzzy, a little bit soft, a little bit yellowed. zoom in for some highlights. Which one are you going to be doing? I've got a request to zoom in. Here. Okay. Here we go. We're going in. Go in. Here, I'll put it so I'll do these two. Just leave it so you can get those two in. Okay. Now I've got the pink here. I'm going to put a little bit of the pink on this one. This one's actually going to be pretty... It's in the pink, so I'm not going to need to put any of the pink on that one. Just these ones that are a little up higher, maybe. I'm realizing now I didn't put any highlights on my painting. You didn't? What? Let me see your painting. Oh, I showed it to you before the show. I know, but nobody else saw it. You want to share it? I'll share it on the Facebook group okay. with everybody else. Okay. <laughs> Except for Kimson won't be able to see it. Kim? Oh, that's right, because she's not on Facebook. I know. Okay, sorry. Should here, I make I'm, her? Yeah, zoom out, because I'm, I'm off camera here again. Working around too much here. Kind of doing too little highlights working. on the bottom. And then I'm going to do a little highlight on the side of the trees here. It's not working? Oh, it worked. It worked. 
that you said it wasn't working. Okay, so I'm going to put in some highlights. And actually, that part is not going to be highlighted because it's covered. A little bit on one side of the tree. Honestly, it does not matter. Just pick a side that's your highlight side and just do all your highlights on that side and you're good. Or if, you know, like when I did the mushrooms, we did the, the focal point in the center. So the highlight, the outsides of the them were darker and then the inside areas were highlighted. So however you want to do that. It's very lightly sort of dry brushing a little bit of this yellow along that, these trunks. Give it a little bit of a glow on one side. And if I wanted to get real creative, I could even do the... These coconuts have these little... Or the coconut palms have these little um, lines in them sometimes. So I might pull some, some little lines coming in across the trunks that in a few. What size liner brush are you using? This one's a two, uh, number two. they want to see it. Well, we'll put it side by side. I like it. I like it. Who did it better? <laughs> oh, we gotta do it this way. It looks like they have arms. Is that intentional? Yeah, yeah they got arms. Is that like like tree family? Yeah. Palm tree family? Exactly. I like so, it. There you go. Good job, honey. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you so much for watching tonight. I really appreciate you all uh, hanging in there and watching all the way through with us and uh, if you try this please do share it with us I love to see your paintings and on Saturday we're going to have our patreon only show so um, if you're not part of the patreon uh, folks that's okay we're gonna still have the bonus video from two months ago go ahead and take that uh, thing off there honey for me okay thank you um, so this will be uploaded. This was our Patreon bonus video from uh, March, I think. March, April, May, May, June, I don't know, April maybe. Anyhow, uh, we do our bonus videos and then we post them two months later. So this was from two months ago. We did this uh, and these turtles are a lot easier than they look. So please do uh, what? Oh, birds. Yeah, birds I need to do paintings. the birds. Okay, yeah, thank you. So please don't be intimidated by um, the way it looks because if you can do little, you know, uh, little spots, um, really you're just filling in little dots here. Um, the hardest part is maybe the shading. Um, the drawing's very easy, and I show you step by step all the way through it. So it's like a two and a half hour video, I think, something like that. Um, so that'll be Saturday uploaded. And then um, the Patreon folks were probably going to do a water lily, I think, live. Um, for the bonus video for this month so um, yeah thank you I forgot the birds we yeah people in chat were, were like hey what we about the birds? Need yeah. the birds okay so I kind of just did the birds like kind of coming from from way up here down and did them different 
different. Uh, some kind of doing straight up. Some doing the full on M. Some more like a V. Closer here, I'm going to do them a little bit bigger. Shallow M. are fun. <laughs> Definitely good. Here, let me sign it real quick. I'll go ahead and use this, this brush. Oh, using the Here, brush I this get, time, huh? Well, yeah, I get asked about signing my paintings a lot. Um, I do use a brush sometimes. just depends. Um, but I find that if I, I go pretty quickly and have my brush loaded up, um, enough I can get my signature in there the G's are the hardest part usually but there we go okay very good and then um, if you are not comfortable with using a liner brush just just grab yourself a good uh, pen you know something that that's uh, waterproof and light fast and uh, use that to sign your paintings there's no harm in using what tools are available to us modern times <laughs> so thanks guys we will see you next time bye